I want to talk to you today about psychic pedophiles. Anytime someone wants to see me for an encounter, whether it's a virtual encounter or in person, they always fill out an intake form. There are a lot of questions on that form. I want to know about their life, what issues you need to be dealt with. And there's one particular area that I look at carefully. That is where they list all the kinds of witchcraft, the occult, and the new age in which they have been involved. And I found something very interesting. Of all the things that people list, one of the most popular, the one they check off the most is Edgar Cayce, the so-called sleeping prophet. You may not know of Edgar Cayce if you haven't been involved in spiritualism or the New Age. But back in 1931, he founded an organization called the Association for Research and Enlightenment. Now, that sounds innocuous, doesn't it? Perhaps you've read some of his books. I've read these books in my study of Edgar Cayce, The Sleeping Prophet, There is a River, Many Mansions. Back at the early part of the 20th century, he was known as the Sleeping Prophet, and he was deeply involved in spiritualism. He was a Baptist Sunday school teacher. There's an interesting story told about how one time he met up with the famed evangelist D.L. Moody, and he talked to Reverend Moody about the things he was getting involved in, and D.L. Moody said, this is demonic, stay away from it. But Edgar Cayce rebelled and went deeper and deeper into the world of the occult and the exploration of what he called the higher self. He is famous for laying down, sleeping, actually going into a trance, and then voices would take over and speak out of his body. Much of what these voices said had to do with health and healing. He would opine on a number of issues like reincarnation, but he also gave forth cures. Like he said, cancer could be cured by eating three almonds a day. He thought a lot about the Lemurians and Atlantis, and then he also said things such as, there's nothing wrong with smoking. And yet, still today, the library at ARE, the Association for Research and Enlightenment, has more than 14,000 of his readings catalog, and people come there from all over the world to see what he had to say about various diseases. And I've been there at the ARE headquarters, particularly the bookstore, which has perhaps the largest collection of occult, witchcraft, and New Age books anywhere on the planet. This all got started when he was a child and an angel appeared to him, a female. Watch out what is a female angel. I talk about that in several of my books. I believe this was a demon that appeared to him because immediately thereafter he began to see auras, the color emanations around people, and he started talking to the dead and he became fascinated with astrology. He is recognized as the foremost founder of what we call the New Age movement today. I have a large section about Edgar Cayce in my Larson's book of World Religions. And I encourage you to read what I have to say there because so many people, perhaps friends and loved ones of yours, get deceived by his teachings. But more to the point of why I'm bringing this up right now. Just recently, there was a published report about what has been happening at the ARA camps. Apparently, pedophilia and child rape has been rampant. Eight women have come forward now alleging that they were molested and raped at these camps and they are filing a lawsuit. Here's what they say in the lawsuit. Aries spiritual teachings set the stage for a silent epidemic of sexual assault and violence against young children and women, including myself. 
we were taught to love and accept our abusers unconditionally. Female campers were being preyed upon by male staff members. And that's because hugs and massages and physical touch between children and adults was encouraged. They also say that at the camp they had something called the Goddess Night, in which all the young girls and women had to run naked through a field while the men watched them. Now, I don't know where this lawsuit is going to go, but one thing is absolutely certain. I have dealt with hundreds, perhaps thousands of people who became demonized because of their fascination with Edgar Cayce, reading his books, studying his teachings, and developing his ideas about the higher self. So I want to say to you, if you've got Edgar Cayce books, throw them out. Repent of any involvement you have with his readings, his trance states, and his predictions and all of his opining on the subject of divination. If you've had contact with stuff of Edgar Cayce, you may need an exorcism of the spirits of Jezebel and witchcraft, and even quite possibly demons of molestation and sexual abuse. Your financial support and prayers make it possible for us to bring hope for the hurting and freedom to those in spiritual bondage. For the latest information regarding ministry outreaches, go to boblarson.org or call 303-980-1511.